Yeah. All right, guys, we're, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, we'll go ahead and get started. We'll have the work session. Monda is out due to a family vacation. She talked to me uh, Friday about her son coming up. So we didn't have a lot, so she's going to be without us tonight. But. So uh, before us, we have our uh, agenda for the workshop and a regular meeting. There need to be any addition relations to the workshop for agenda. Here now, we'll move on to the minutes from the prior meeting, which would be last month. And a copy of the minutes is there inside you, you to review. So this will be the meeting minutes that we have on April meeting. Proclamations or any lost? We have none. <coughs> Surplus property. Uh, we'll give an update on the uh, property that we talked about for the air packs and stuff. And I'll have Matt Clerk and or Commissioner. Do you know about it? Or you want to give an update on it? Yeah. We're, we're not going to be able to surplus those. We can put them on gov deals and do them that way, but we can't sell them. Okay. So that's what we have to do. All that's done because it's federally funded things and forfeitures on the grant that we have to do it that way. So. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I think the face mask will be okay. We don't know. We just have to put it all in there. Yeah, just put it all in there. Yeah. Okay. Ready, so we will go ahead and do that. So we'll, we've already surplused it in the meeting, and we'll just go ahead and authorize uh, the process of putting it on gut deals and run through like we have our other surplus equipment. So we'll probably need to add that to consent agenda from the attorney that we are adjusting, I guess, the final surplus to, to, to do that to be surplus to gut deals versus the donation to the truck. Right this past week, we also had a joint proclamation that we've done with the county for law appreciation uh, day. We're going to have to do that in a different form. Sorry. We can see what we have to do. I guess somebody else will drive. But this is something we do every year uh, with with the county and with mainly with the Optimus Club. And Things that go on and show appreciation for our, our law enforcement and women in blue that's out there. It was a real nice service. Myself and Terry was there uh, representing the city, and uh, we had all divisions of the law enforcement from the city, county, uh, state patrol, uh, DNR, MCCD. Uh, we recognized. Uh, Nominated with our retired officer David Duval from the Troop Police Department, and they also donated, uh, gave him a plaque for his service. Was it 30? 33. Yeah, 33 years of service between the sheriff's office and here. But uh, officer of the year that was nominated by a group uh, was Nathan Sledge from the Bay County Sheriff's Office. Uh, and it'd be really good to have everybody together and represent. Everybody look nice. And, Show them what our folks do day and night and some of the things that they do. And it's an honor to read this proclamation. Me and Ted usually split it, but this, sometimes we split it, but I had to read the whole thing this year, and I love doing that for the family in blue and emergency services. It's an honor to work with them on a day to day, knowing that they do. And I, I say it that we always, you know, they're protecting that life out there every day. Uh, and we always want to make sure they come home and they have the information they need. Our DA gave a speech of the short amount of time on a traffic stop. We make call these traffic stops in. I teach our dispatchers when they're doing that, they're on the edge of their seats. They're, they're looking with their hands or make sure the officer knows where he's at and what he's doing. And, you know, if he needs help or needs something, what they do. And, but they're out 
out there risking that life every day. We appreciate our men and women of law enforcement, especially our city officers here, keeping our city, city, and I guess commissioner, if you got any other things. But, yeah. No, I just today we've got the you know men and women that we do have. Right now, a lot of departments are struggling just to find them, but we're fortunate here in Trent. We've got you know a good group of people there that care. So we're uh, we're real blessed. We're, Good Already, uh, we'll add that to the consent agenda. And also, this is something we spoke about a while back, and we really uh, was following up with EPD on our being a local issue and authority. We have passed this already. Uh, it was went through our city attorney. Uh, this is allows uh, Chief Kaiser and. Chief Smith to be able for any agency within the city to um, bring soil erosion plans to us. We passed this almost a year and a half ago and found out that it did not get processed forward to Atlanta, so they asked us to reissue again. Uh, there have been a change of guard with EPD and they've moved in offices, uh, but we ran out through this and it, uh, it started with the Trenton pressing. You know, there's a lot of preliminary work that goes in with a lot of these buildings, so uh, we, you know, there is construction going on that, and we are monitoring, but that allows them to be their, uh, those two chiefs are red card holders through Georgia EPD, allows them to make sure the sediment control and all that's being uh, taken care of, but the plans come in, uh, EPD looks at them as well, but being a local issue, it allows it to happen here a lot quicker than it does through the state. Uh, they're staying on top of that, and we just need to add this back. Again, it's been going through uh, the state uh, uh, ordinance that they give us. The city massage, the city attorney has massaged it, and it's been done. We don't pass it at once. We just need to redo it again with a new date for our application to the state. To become the and our guys are current and up to date. All right. Anything else, commissioners? We need. That's everything in the work session. We can add all those uh, items to the uh, consent agenda. We can just step right into our regular meeting. If I'm good. Right. We'll stand. We'll have prayer, and we'll go to pledge allegiance. <coughs> thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, we thank these commissioners, you uh, workers, and people watching us tonight. And just please feel free to call us anytime. And, uh, we're going to conduct this business tonight. And Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for this city and these commissioners, our workers, uh, protecting the life and property of our city. And as we move on with business tonight, uh, forward to make things better for this city as they move on. Be with us in our decisions and be with everyone that passes through and travels through our city. In your precious name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, this is a regular scheduled meeting of the City of Trent, which takes place on the second Monday of every month. Proper notice was given to our local ordinance and posted in our hallway. This time we'll go through Commissioner Rocom, Commissioner Powell. Here. Commissioner Norris. Here. Commissioner House. Here. Uh, Commissioner uh, Wooden is absent for uh, vacation and personal time off. Uh, we do have a form to conduct business. This time we'll step in with our department reports and we'll go with Commissioner Holmes, Police Department. Now, the Trenton Police Department answered 258 calls for service during the month of April, conducted 1,661 business checks, answered one animal, com animal complaint. Responded to 13 domestic disturbance calls, four trespassing calls, nine suspicious persons or activities calls, and worked 17 traffic accidents. <clears throat> now, 55 traffic stops were conducted, resulting in 33 citations being issued. Citations issued are as follows speeding, 11, the driver's license violations, are one, disorderly conduct, two, that by shoplifting one, 
DUI 1, failure to maintain lane 1, failure to yield 3, registration requirements 2, failure to stop at stop sign 1, seatbelt violations 2, violation of the hand free law 3, following too closely 2, traffic signal violation 1, headlight requirements 3, and no insurance 1. That was the that's the report for the public activity. And I'd also like to uh, let the other commissioners know that we did lose you, of course, due to as, as an officer retired. But we have a young man, uh, Kevin Hazard, right? He was part time with us, worked for the Sheriff's Department, he's decided to come full time. So uh, in, the, in the next week or so, you all be sitting him on patrol. And I guess that's all I have. One more thing. Is there one, has anybody seen one of your cars on the highway? What do y'all think about the paint job? Striping? Our chief and another one came up with that. But it's really good, it's visible from the neighborhood. If they drive through the neighborhood, you should be able to see that car coming. I don't want to pass, they put ghost writing on them and all kind of stuff, but uh, that's not getting the job done. We're going to be visible. Yeah, that car I think is visible. Mm -hmm. So all three are in and on patrol. We've got uh, the body cam the new body cameras and our, our car cameras are happening June the 15th with the server upgrades. And we got a little behind from some problems of getting the cars here in time. We had to postpone it. They did push us to July 27th. A lot of begging and pleading. And our motorola workers working with us and helping us. So hopefully the, the new equipment as well, but it's still the guys are still protecting what they using the current body cameras and all, so it's a good thing. There is one of the cars outside parked if you might go out there and look at it. They're really nice. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Final Park. Okay. Uh, the community center was rented thirty seven hours. We've had four animal control work order complaints. Uh, Red softball is still active at this time, and the pool will open May the 27th. And all the prices, everything will be the same as last year. Uh, we will be still being will be closed on Sundays, and the parking lot is supposed to be paid this week, the one in front of the chapel. So we're all looking forward to that. I know it was about 24 more parking places. And that's all I have. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. Fire and Utilities, Commissioner Harris. Um, the sewer department answered 31 underground locates, four emergency locates, and had eight sewer calls. Planning and zoning, have, we had four, one property review, three remodels, four new constructions, uh, one garage addition, one plan review, and eight electrical and HVAC and plumbing inspections. Uh, the fire department had a total of 115 calls. They were dispatched to 40. Had five, eight fire-related accidents, medical, and 20 standbys. I'm sorry, let me redo that. They had eight fire related, nine accidents, 38 medical, 20 standby, and they were dispatched and canceled to 40 for a total of 115. Spring has sprung and everybody's trimming bushes back. And 
you'll see a big load of this coming through every day. Uh, our seasonal guys, we really worked on the sidewalks and the ditches and the cracks. Uh, it's hard to believe grass grows on asphalt, but it does in the concrete. So we keeping that clean, which also helps keep the storm waters moving quicker to get them out. Uh, we also scraped the side of the road on the first in case we had an issue with some of the, all the water that undermined it, the little section right there in front of the Trenton uh, telephone company, the water was coming out <coughs> of the ditch and it, under road, it undermined a good section of the road and they had to dig that out. And we had three sections right through there where we had to undermine and put riprap and concrete back to keep it where it's eroding so bad. All these flash floodings like what we got last night is, is rough. And, uh, and they got a new 6x10 trailer to help pull some of their equipment around. Uh, this was some of the ones that we got stolen whenever we have from our event last year. Yeah, if you see anything on the streets, please don't hesitate to call. You can call City Hall or send us an alert on our website and we can get a work order quickly and that is hit to Timmy and then pretty quick and they can get on it. <coughs> Sometimes we don't see them we see them or the officers see them or if I see them, we call and do a work order pretty quick. But sometimes if you see something that we may not be at a time your subdivisions, please call because uh, we want to keep that stuff. And we were just talking about if you see water standing on the side of the road or where the mailbox is pulling off and holding water, that's something we need to know too because that just soaks into our road. And you start seeing the dip in the road, it gets it soft and we need to be able to put crushing around and patch that stuff up. So. If y'all see that, please help us. All right, we'll get into the financials here. For the lines of my report, uh, again, we, we've been really uh, busy with, you know, working with everyone. Uh, we, me and Terry's had a few meetings on some stuff with the park that we're going to announce as we announced last month. And even today, we got an email from the supplier that, is going to come back and meet with us. I think he's going to come up the 12th and go over the reviews that we can get an RFP out for the Moose Co. Lighting. We've also uh, got some ideas of, uh, you know, see what that's going to cost us and see what we can work at in with Splash. Uh, had a, uh, another meeting at the Regional Commission meeting. Uh, it was really good. Uh, I've got to meet with two of our U.S. Uh, Congress representatives, and I'm asking for some help on our infrastructure grants that's coming down the pipes through the federal government on our sewer, uh, which we know is a, a big thing. We are working on the what we're calling our phase two uh, with handling solids and uh, our Woolbright station that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, engineering is happening right now with that. Uh, Commissioner and I, the attorneys, reviewed uh, the contracts, and we've got that that we talked about moving forward with, and uh, that's in process now. But hopefully, we can find us a good grant. Um, I'm not, I like, I don't mind asking. Okay. It's our We're federal grant. Right yeah, but it's a, it's going to be a tremendous expense on us. So uh, the first RFP is going out uh, right now on the bar screen. We finally got some legal guidelines on the ARPA funding which we, we got to finish up a report right now with that. Uh, quarterly reports on the federal funds. We still haven't spent anything. No, we have spent one time on the uh, uh, engineering fee, the first percent. They charge us a percent to get the fee the stuff ready to go. And when the RFPs go out and come back in, they, you know, they charge us another little bit. But you know, it's, a, it's not one lump at a time. So they do it in steps, and then when we award a contractor, they kind of oversee the job and they'll, they'll pay them in a series of that and then the final inspection. So it's it's good that we're, we're getting through this and hopefully uh, within another couple months we, we'd like to get moving as quick as possible, but we have to step through the federal procurement on our, our follow the federal procurement and our procurement process. So hopefully we can have some numbers as quick as we can. Anyway, I met with those two uh, Congress uh, representatives, and that's the reason to go show her face and talk, and uh, it's coming down. Uh, Mike Cameron also spoke on my behalf on another meeting to the, some more representatives, and I did get an email from him and some of the representatives. Uh, I did email them all explaining our progress we're doing and what we're needing. Uh, one of the things that uh, Madam Commissioner and, and Wayne and I have been talking about, we got 
clay pipe that's been in these streets since the 60s or so. Uh, there's so many new techniques to get these things repaired that we never have to open the ground. They either call it pipe bursting or lighting these pipes once they're inspected in camera. Uh, trying to make more contact with uh, what this cost and it's so up and down depending on what you got and they can't tell it till we camera and luckily with our small camera system we're able to look at a little bit of this but uh, all this rain uh, our pumps are running solid uh, Dwayne Hills get called uh, out all the time uh, with the overtime that they get and that's the stuff that we cannot go with we've got a pump down as we talked about last month so it's, it's a big thing uh, it's still a major item I think we, we're really paying attention to as commissions and we're moving forward, uh, just ain't moving as fast as we want it to. So, but uh, hopefully from that, you know, keeping our keeping our eyes open and listening. Uh, we also uh, done some meeting with uh, uh, Sandy and George on DDA. Uh, you know, kind of ask y'all to be thinking of folks. We need to start getting some uh, some of those in, and maybe a temporary group to get something to drive forward 100 percent with working on our 24 budget, which we're going to announce some of the work dates next month. So get your calendars ready. It's coming fast, as we know. We're almost, seem like we're halfway through this month already, so again, be thinking about things and, and where we are, but please think of some good folks. You remember that guidelines that we gave out last month? Uh, uh, four of them have to be meet those criteria. Uh, so we're going to be thinking about any of those, of those four people all four individuals to see and then the other three we can look you know somebody out of the county that has a business in here or vice versa or just in the county want to help and we'd like to be able to get a small group together of five or six and, or something to get some plans moving forward and get ready and, uh, and go forward with that and really be ready to run pretty quick and have some ideas and help us determine that budget when we get started for 24. Alrighty, I'm going to start into financials here, uh, ending as we balance our books a month and a prior. So this is all ending March 31st, 2023, and all this is reconciliated through our financials. Oh, I will speak on our financials, our Edmonds. We had a little bit of work this week on that. Uh, we're on a pretty tight schedule. Uh, our goal is to be live January. The first part should be the beginning or mid-December. Yeah. So we might have to double books a little bit. We, we may have to do it. We're just or maybe the first quarter, first half, and we're ahead with our auditor as well to see where that is. But uh, there's a lot of change uh, for the good. Uh, we really have intrigued him with the Department of Revenue's chart of accounts and getting a little bit better. There's always been a little flanagling that we've had to cheat QuickBooks with, and hopefully this will be a lot better. So uh, April's the timekeeper. Uh, striping clerk to keep us online for that between her and Catherine and myself, so we're, we're really driven by moving as quick as we can with that. All right, a general fund account is $1,160,530.96. Sewer fund is $240,139.51. Hotel motel fund currently is $168,629.24. Police department fund is two thousand four hundred eighty five dollars and twenty three cents a track fire department fund is one thousand four hundred thirty dollars and seventy nine cents again ARPA fund that was eight hundred four thousand so that's that, what we talked about uh, engineering fee seven thousand seven hundred sixty seven thousand one hundred seventy seven dollars and fifty four cents current savings is uh, one hundred twenty seven thousand two hundred thirty five dollars and twenty four cents 2015 splodge is $60,945. And 2021 splodge is $183,982.61. March revenues ending 23 is $113,665.75. March expenses was $351,902.90. <coughs> January through March, uh, revenues is eight hundred and forty-nine thousand nine hundred fifty-four nine hundred fifty-four dollars and forty-four cents. Uh, January through March, expenses of twenty-three is six hundred ninety-six thousand one hundred ninety dollars and seven cents. 
Sewer uh, March revenue was fifty thousand seven hundred sixty dollars. Uh, expenses for the sewer of March is thirty six thousand three hundred eighty seven dollars. Uh, Twelve cents January through March revenues. Uh, sewer is one hundred eighty three thousand nine hundred seventy eight dollars and sixty five cents. Uh, sewer uh, expenses January through March is one hundred thousand thirty four dollars and thirty seven cents. So that is our financials and reconciliation of all the uh, checkbooks, uh, checking accounts there. So I'll take a motion for the financials as read. I'll make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Harris. No, no. second. Second by Commissioner Norris. Is there any discussion? Okay, if not, a motion to approve the uh, financials. Is there all in favor say aye? Yeah. Any motion? Any opposed? Motion carries. All righty, uh, Tree City, USA. Uh, I'm going to give a little, Miss Eloise is not here, but we did uh, do Arbor Day just a little bit late, about a week late. We did uh, plant a tree in the uh, memory of Lisa Townsend, her, our county clerk, Bob Townsend. She lost uh, uh, with cancer a long battle there. But we planted a It was a dogwood, a cherry, some type of dog. I forgot. But anyway, it's right in. The, it's on the courts facility on the east side of the uh, parking lot next to Citizens Bank. It's right in the middle. Uh, they got on pretty good. He told us, "Hey, we're going to plant this tree here. Can you think? See where I'm standing? You think you can see it pretty good?" You know, he was trying to mimic it there. And then they come down and it surprised them and uh, had uh, Lori. And her husband showed up as well. Uh, Miss Conway couldn't come. She was fighting an eye issue of some sort of possible pink eye, but they kind of shocked him with that proclamation. We done our Arbor Day uh, resolution that I read to them that we do every year, and on this year we put in the middle of it to honor Miss Lisa as well. So it was pretty nice for them. Hopefully, it's many years to see. Then the fire department rode by later and gave it a real nice drink of water. We're watching it for them for a while. So uh, we thank Miss Eloise for that. All right, we're going to get into our appearances. Miss uh, Mindy Howard. 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 Yeah. For, <laughs> yes. There you go. Hey. Here we go. Okay, our April staff. I'm just going to point out a few of them. Uh, once again, our door count was over 2,000. Um, that means for every month so far this year at the library, we've had our door counts at over 2,000, um, which is pretty impressive. Um, our computer, I say that every time I come, you know, one of the things that we offer is um, the ability for anyone, whether, you have, whether you're a patron or not, to kind of use our computers. And we had 20, 223 logins on our computers this month. And our printer, we, we printed 695 pages at the library. And that doesn't even account for the ones that people can't quite figure out the computer and they can't remember their password, so they just have to send it through our email, our circulation email, and we print it for them from that. Um, our ready to read story time, I think all y'all know we went through a transition with our youth education coordinator. We have found a fantastic um, youth Education Coordinator Lynn Arp and our story time has been phenomenal since she has taken over. We had 84 kids this month and if, if some of y'all aren't aware that's sort of the that's the cornerstone programming of the library. Ready to Read is basically uh, getting children ready to enter kindergarten. It's one of the only uh, programs out there that's free where we do you know we we work on introducing them to literacy but also numbers, counting, colors, things like that, and there's always some fine motor skills, large motor skills, things that we do along with the story time. So those numbers are just fantastic, and we're really, really happy to have Lynn on board with us. Um, I also wanted to point out, we had um, our adult programming, we had 55 people come to different adult programs um, during the month of April. Some of those programmings were, um, we had poetry reading from a, a regional author, we have, twice a month, we have yoga for seniors. We have a quilting class, learn to quilt. We have several sewing machines at the library that you can come to the library and utilize the sewing machines. And we use that for the quilting class. 
We have a yarn craft, which so kind of a get together, and we also have book clubs. So we have 55 adults coming into the library just for special programming. Um, I want to reiterate the Ask the Lawyer Day. I was happy to see the sign out front, but anybody that's interested, this will be the last date we have on the calendar for right now. Um, you need to call that number to make an appointment. It is not the library number. You are calling the Georgia Legal Services Program to set up an appointment with them because they need um, to make sure that the issue that you have is a civil, not a uh, criminal issue, and that they can tell you what paperwork to bring to the meeting. Um, all of our slots were full for May, and so we're hoping that all of our slots for June will be full. I was wondering how many. We, yeah, we, we've had good, we've had really good turnout, um, people making the appointment um, and getting things taken care of. Good. We have a, a, another a collaboration with Club and Canyon State Park. The naturalists are going to come on Thursday, May 24th at 4 p.m. to do a special program on fireflies. So we are always excited to work with Club and Canyon and have the naturalists come. And those, those programs are always very popular. So. Come on out May 24th, um, 4 p.m. That's usually geared towards elementary age students. So um, kindergarten through middle school, a little bit younger, they might, you know, the, the information we're presenting there might be a little above the preschoolers yet. Or they may not have the, the wherewithal. Yeah. Okay, I am so excited, y'all. Summer reading's coming up. This will be my second year doing summer reading. If any of y'all have seen some of the crowds that come to the library during summer reading, um, it's big. Basically, the concept behind our summer reading challenge every year is to sort of stop that summer slide and help kids continue to maintain their literacy throughout the summer while they're not in school. Um, basically, we go out to the community and ask for community sponsors to help us pay for the programming that we bring in every Thursday for the children. Um, and then every other week we bring in something special for the teens. And we're also bringing in some really cool adult programming this year as well. These are our sponsors, the Bank of Day, the Southeast Lineman Training Center, Bull News Tube Company, CB&T, Matt Mayfield Insurance Agency, Mark and Lisa Cagle, the Optimist Club, and the Friends of Dade County Library. They all made possible us to be able to bring in some of the special performers we bring in for those large crowds. So I want to make sure, thank those businesses when you go in. If, if any of y'all see some of those pictures of the crowds, you'll know that how important it is to bring that programming in. Registration opens May 15th, and then you can start logging your hours on June 5th. What I mean by that is every, we're, the challenge is to read 20 minutes a day. And this is, if you're reading with your kids, that counts. If you're listening to a book on tape, that counts. There's little prizes they get, these little brag tags, they come into the library and all the kids love to, each week, if they read their 20 minutes a day, they get a brag tag. At the end of the summer, we have some carefully chosen books for all age groups. Everybody that finishes the challenge gets to pick out a book for their home library. So you can sign up on chrl.beanstack.org on May 15th. And I wanted to highlight a few. Uh, a few. We, these are all of our special summer reading programming. This is in addition to what we normally have on the calendar. For the full calendar, go to chrl.org and click on the Dade County um, calendar side. But Special for our summer reading, we're bringing in these performers, like I said, but I kind of wanted to highlight in June, we're having a special community day. The theme for this year's summer reading is all together now. So um, on June 22nd, we're having community day, and we are having story time with our community, a few of our community leaders. Mayor Alex Case will be reading a story. Um, Superintendent Josh Engel will be reading a story, and County Executive Ted Rowley will all be reading a story. And then thankfully, um, again, Mayor Case has, uh, has helped me organize a fire truck and an ambulance to have out there. And Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Norris has um, gracefully um, allowed for us to have a police car out front. So we're going to have all those. We're calling it our emergency vehicle parade and tour. There will be folks on hand to let the kids sort of see what's happening with these emergency vehicles to celebrate Community Day in the library. So we're really excited about that. And already we've got some of the posters up around the library and I've already had moms and kids really excited about that one in particular. So we thank everybody who's helping to make that day happen. In June, I also wanted to highlight, that's our kids program. I wanted to highlight, we're doing something special Tuesday, June 13th. It's Teen Entrepreneurship with Tommy Johns. He is one of our children's performers that comes in. He's doing something special, it's called Teen Boss. And it's all about getting kids excited and interested in entrepreneurship, 
but it's also got some personal finance in there. There's a lot of really good information that um, I know our teens need. They want that information on personal finance. They want that information. This is more than just go out and mow somebody's lawn and get a little bit of extra money. So we're excited to bring Tommy Johns in for that. So we've got three real, or two really great uh, workshops for adults, one in June, one in July. They're both writing focused. We've got an uh, award-winning author, um, Estelle Ford Williams. She wrote a book called Rising Fawn that takes place in Rising Fawn, Georgia and Atlanta. She's gonna be doing a, a reading of that on June 20th, but she's coming back on Wednesday um, she's a memoirist as well, so she writes memoirs, which is basically her family stories. She's going to be doing a workshop um, writing family stories, and I think that that's something that's really uh, going to go over well here in Dade. There's so many stories in Dade County. Whenever the ladies and the, the fellows that work in the history room, they're always talking about all these family stories. So I really hope that we have some participation so we can capture some of these stories, get them down in writing. Um, so it's not just an oral tradition, but it actually um, comes down to writing. So we're excited to have her coming in June, and then we're having Chris Wharton come back for a writing workshop in July. And it's not part of our summer reading, but we're also bringing a publisher in in August to talk about how do you get your stuff published. Um, all the way from newspaper articles to magazine articles to books. So we're going to follow up our writing workshops in June and July with a publishing workshop in August. We're also bringing in improv Chattanooga for our teens. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar, but it's basically a form of theater where you do improv. It's problem solving, it's thinking, and it's a lot of fun. And improv Chattanooga is very successful. They do lots of different shows all over the Chattanooga area. They are going to come and do a workshop with our teens. So I'm excited about that as well. And last but not least, our full calendar is always on CH. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my formatting got a little messed up. Sometimes when I change it over, no, that's me, I'm sure. Um, it's chrl.org. Um, you can always go to Facebook or Instagram. We are posting our calendars up there every month. Uh, we post every week what's happening, but you can get the full calendar on chrl.org. If you just click on the day, you can see everything that's happening, a little bit of information about it. You can always call us um, during our opening hours. And I appreciate, once again, y'all letting me come every month and explain what's happening in the library. Busy place. Can I? Yes, sir. If, 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 if we could get a little advice from the commission, uh, if you can help us get Mindy motivated before she gets more excited, uh, it would be helpful. <laughs> uh, uh, they're they're really a bunch of hardworking people at the library, and uh, I, I don't know I don't know of any any other places that are like doing what they do. But um, last year, from July to December, their print circulation was uh, right at 20,000 books, lacking four books, circulating 20,000. I guess if you couldn't put 20,000 books in this room. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Um, they had a circulation of 6,808 e-books, audio books, and e-magazine circulation. They got 500 new card holders. They're also working with the schools where children in school are automatically library card holders. The schools are finally discovering, you know, what a benefit that is. And in that six months, they had 14,409 visits to the library. So that's that's a lot of stuff. And, and I just, uh, I know that y'all are going to be beating, trying to put together a budget for next year, and I know that Everybody's strapped, and I talked to Alex, and he told me that your insurance is going up 25 percent this year. But I just, you know, on behalf of these people, we're working really, really hard to make this. With you know, just please remember us as much as you can when you when you go to putting that budget together. That's all I got. That way, we sure will. All right, just safety what? Lots Good evening. <clears throat> We've got some um, webinars coming up. Um, Small Business Development Center. Um, got several coming up tomorrow. Um, managing uh, your small business. How to write a dynamic business plan. On the tenth, we've got starting. Um, imagine starting and growing an online business. And then on the sixteenth, um, big three in your business. Uh, that's accounting and finance. Online. 
for April uh, at the Welcome Center, uh, we had four residents that came in, uh, 42 visitors, and they're coming from all over now. Um, today we had somebody from Spain that came up, um, and 40 calls. Uh, coming up, uh, I don't know if some businesses are uh, familiar with this, but this is the sixth annual um, Idea Link Grant event. Um, you can find out more information at tufcu.com. I believe um, that's opportunities for uh, small business to um, get some grant uh, opportunities for uh, to help their business out. Um, there is this, the community shred day at Day uh, Bank of Day on the 13th, and uh, you can have up to 10 boxes of documents to shred. So if you've been waiting to shred some stuff, there's your opportunity. Um, also coming up on the 18th through the 21st of May is the um, U.S. 11 Antique Alley um, Yard Sale. Uh, if you're interested in participating in that, um, there are spaces available at the Dade County uh, Sports Complex. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it goes from Mississippi all the way to Virginia. <coughs> we had a very successful uh, career day um, that we co-sponsor with the um, Dade County High School on the 19th of April. Um, we had uh, 38 employers there, um, and then also um, <coughs> almost 300 junior and seniors. Um, it was a very good day. I think everybody was really happy with the turnout and with the activity there. This week is uh, National Tourism Week, and so we're challenging everyone to be a tourist in their own hometown. Um, you can go out to our local attractions um, and have some fun um, by yourself or with your family or friends and take photos and then post them on our Facebook page, uh, Lots for Day, and register to win some prizes. Um, we also, we're posting um, this flyer as well as information on the uh, local attractions in Dade County uh, on the Facebook page and so you can find out more information there. Um, but have fun and um, and send us your pictures. Also, um, the week after that, the 14th through the 21st, is um, I Love My State Park Week. So um, if you haven't, don't get enough of um, Cloudland Canyon this week, then please um, go the next week and just have some fun. Um, things are wonderful there. Um, we just had an opportunity to be out there last Thursday with a photographer um, we're doing a, uh, a lot today is doing a visitor guide, and so we got some wonderful photographs, of not only at the park, but other places. So um, please utilize our park. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it's a great place. It's been busy. It has. Thank you. That's, that's my report. All right. Thank you. Again, with agenda, uh, no other legal matters. I know that bring before the commission. Is there any unfinished business that needs to be brought up before the commission? Any other citizen participation that would like to speak to the commission or service? Here now we'll go into new business and we'll have items to consider from the workshop, the current agenda, previous meeting minutes. We also had the proclamation for the uh, law enforcement, or respect to law of joint proclamation of Dade County. We also had the ordinance for soil erosion, sediment, and pollution control. And we will re-ask of the surplus property of the uh, air packs that we received on federal funding to be surplus through gov deals and not be able to currently be donated based on what regulations are attorney bound through the federal fund grant that we have. Anything else, Commissioner, that we have a quick? Not here, no, I'd like to ask a motion for the items to be considered for new business. I'll make the motion. Make the motion by Commissioner Collins. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Norris. Any discussion? Uh -huh. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. No executive session that I know of. Commissioner, y'all good? All right. All right, we're going to get into some adjournment. Please remember, if you'd like to see the new patrol car, uh, this is patrol car for uh, Officer Trey Weedham, which is sitting back here in the back. He's also uh, uh, 
has one of our tag readers that we've had for a while. He is very active with that and does a good job by keeping things on. He can explain how that works and you can see the layout in his car. He's been very instrumental in some of the newer technology along with us and making it easier for, their, for them. They look at some different items and we're moving some different things around with our current software thanks to these guys. Because uh, they're in these things for 12 hours, in and out, up and down. And just look at what they got laid out in that thing. And, uh, thank you for your splash funds because that's what funds these. We got two more should be delivered this year sometime, Chief. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to be looking at what forward on next year on our fleet. Thank you, thank them. If you take a few minutes to look at that, uh, I believe that's it. Anything else, Commissioner? Job of mine. We're kind of All right, we'll take a motion for adjournment. We thank everybody for being here. I'll make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Hounds. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Powell. Fire side. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Very happy to see you.